It's our lottery tickets for drafts. Again, draft season is heating up. I've got three today, and let's begin with my three picks for lottery tickets. I'm going to start in Jacksonville. We know that Marquise Lee has been placed on IR. He's out for the year. Keelan Cole, who last year during the final three weeks of the regular season had 30 total targets. How about that? I mean, he was an absolute Mm -hmm. beast. 30 targets. Only Larry Fitzgerald had more than Keelan Cole during those final three weeks of the season. I think when you're making a lottery ticket uh, evaluation, part of it is statistical data and part of it is just faith in the player's ability. I think somebody has to catch passes, and I think that Keelan Cole, uh, whose ADP is up 33 slots in wider, amongst wide receivers over the past week, has got a chance to make a pretty consistent mark there in Jacksonville. I agree. I moved him with the news of Marquis Lee. I moved him up in my rankings pretty significantly because I think he is going to be, um, I don't, I hate to use the word beneficiary, but I think he's going to end up taking most of the volume. More prominent role mm-hmm. this year. My next pick will be Michael Gallup, the third round like pick that. out of Colorado State for the Dallas Cowboys. Wide receiver 80, uh, 59 in terms of ADP. You know, again, we don't have this NFL sample size to evaluate him off of, other than the fact that he did score a touchdown in the first preseason game on a 30 yard catch from Dak Prescott. You know, he is the best combination of size and speed that the Cowboys have. I think they feel pretty confident in some of the players that can operate in the middle of the field. He's still a wild card for them. And again, when I mentioned earlier that I'm all in on Dak Prescott, you know, sort of by default, I have to like some of the pass catchers there in Dallas. I think Gallup is a very reasonable upside play. Like both those guys. I also like D.D. Westbrook. Um, I have Cole, Keelan Cole ranked ahead of D.D. Westbrook, but uh, I like both those guys. And certainly if you're drafting a Cowboys wide receiver, I'm with you. Michael Gallup would be the guy. Someone's got to catch passes there. Somebody does in Dallas. My last one here would be Bilal Powell, who's been undrafted or going undrafted in 60% of leagues. His ADP is 53 <laughs> amongst running backs. He averages 5.04 yards per touch in his career. Now, I get it. Part of that's inflated by the passing game value, but also an effective runner. And if I gave you, and I know Matthew likes to do this during the fantasy show, a blind resume of two yeah. separate people. One of them has nine touchdowns over the last 325 touches. One player has 1,629 yards for nine touchdowns with nearly 14% of his carries gaining 10 or more yards. Second player has 1,782 yards with 11 touchdowns, nearly 13% of the carries gaining 10 yards. That's a lot of data right there, but the point was this. Two players who over the last 325 touches have been comparably effective. The one who had slightly better overall numbers was Kareem Hunt. The second one was Bilal Powell. This is not to say that Bilal Powell is the same player that Kareem Hunt is, nor should he be drafted close to him. The point is merely this. All it takes for Bilal Powell to be effective is an opportunity. Eli McGuire's already hurt. The, the team did recently sign Sharkandrick West and has Thomas Rawls in the mix, but I feel like Bilal Powell is going to be utilized enough that for a potential week one waiver wire ad has a ton of value. I would agree with that. I mean, I look, I still prefer Isaiah Crowell, but Powell's been running ahead of him so far in the preseason. Ultimately, I think Crowell's the better player. I think he will... Uh, and I think he's obviously the better shot at getting touchdowns. But Powell's going to be involved, and at his ADP, he's certainly going to outperform his ADP. He's being left for dead. Yeah, he's seriously. It, 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 it's confusing, especially, you know, the, the Jets themselves sometimes have confusing use uh, with Bilal Powell. I would just note he's run extensively with the first-team offense this preseason, and it is a new coordinator in Jeremy Bates. Football season is truly almost here. And huge cash prizes are up for grabs at DraftKings, the leader in one-week fantasy sports. DraftKings is hosting a fantasy contest for week one with $2 million bucks up for grabs, and it's free to enter with your first deposit. Get the app or go to DraftKings.com now and use code FOCUS to play free with your first deposit in the week one play action contest. That's code FOCUS to play for your share of $2 million. Bucks. Minimum $5 deposit required. Eligibility restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com for details. Matthew, it's your chance to go to your three lottery tickets. Let's begin with a quarterback in Cleveland. Real quickly before we go to my uh, my lottery tickets, Daniel asked me to tweet this. Oh, darling, <laughs> you looking for that golden slumber? Is there someone that has you saying, I want you? Then come together because we've got the sleepers for you. Something, um, something about these players really moves us. Do you get it? Anything great, yeah. Do you know? But do you Beatles. understand what it is? Right. Yeah, it's, a Beatles, it's a bunch of Beatles. Come together, right, obviously. Right, right now, all Abbey Road songs, all yeah. songs off the beautiful Abbey Road album. Good job, Daniel. That's you know what? I'll good. tell you this. 
I've heard of the Beatles. Finally, <laughs> finally, a we band we've heard of. We share a musical connection. Yeah. Said, finally. It, it, wow, it's finally happened. Finally. It's beautiful. Yeah, exactly. The, the Beatles. Beatles. The yeah. band we've the heard Beatles. of. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> finally, a, finally a good band that we've heard of. Yeah, whatever happened to brand those for guys. You. <laughs> Whatever did happen to them? We should do a retrospective on them. Uh, all right, That's never so, been done. Never, never idea. been done. Go. So among my uh, late round sleepers or my lottery tickets, if you will, Tyrod Taylor, um, currently being being undrafted in over seventy percent of leagues. His ADP, if he is being drafted, he's quarterback twenty two. This is a guy who was a top twelve fantasy quarterback in both total points and points per game over the last three seasons, and that was when he was in Buffalo where he never played with a wide receiver that had a thousand yard season until Kelvin Benjamin got traded midway through the season. Now he goes to a Browns offense. You've talked about how Jarvis Landry came very close to being your all in player. Mm -hmm. We all like David and Joku as a second year player to take a big leap this year. Uh, Josh Gordon, you know, I'm very high on uh, no pun intended. I'm very high on Josh Gordon uh, having a big year this season. We think the running game will be effective as well. So, yeah, Tyrod Taylor, who is who, along with Cam Newton, are the only quarterbacks with at least four rushing touchdowns and 80 rushing attempts in each of the past three seasons. Feel that rushing just keeps his floor high, as long as he has the job. And my expectation is actually health wise, I bet you he keeps this job all year because I think the Browns are competitive enough that they're not going to want to go to Baker Mayfield. I think they will be in the playoff hunt until the end of the year, and I think they've got a shot at making the playoffs. So. Yeah, Tyra Taylor. Oh, just listen. Look, to you're bearing the so lead right speak. there. Yeah. Look at you. You're making Keith is so excited. Don't you tease him unless you mean it. Keith, <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> Man, I hope you're right. Yeah. <laughs> Look, exactly. That's about over all I. There. That's about all I can think because I I can't possibly be positive. Well, Mike Clay has yeah. gone on record and saying he thinks they will make the playoffs. I'm I I wouldn't go that far, but neither would. Look, I. they have they have that talent. They and I I do believe they will be competitive, and I do believe Tyrod Taylor keeps this job all year long, and he's going to be a top twelve fantasy quarterback as long as he's starting quarterback, and he's currently basically free. In drafts. I'll How about a wide receiver for Daniel's beloved Lions? Kenny Galladay. Babytron, as uh, my friend JJ likes to call him. Babytron currently going undrafted in almost 40% of leagues. Uh, his wide, he's, uh, his ADP is wide receiver 41. Uh, I have him, uh, I think, higher than that. Uh, wide receiver 51 is his ADP. 80, yes, exactly. I'm at wide receiver 42, so I have, you know, uh, you know uh, a, a, a decent amount higher than him. Look, you think about what he does. I mean, six foot four, two hundred thirteen pounds, a thirty-five inch vertical leap. And this is somebody that, when he was on the field last year, significantly cut into Marvin Jones' targets. Marvin Jones got ten targets a game when Galladay was out. Five targets a game when he was there. Again, we talk about sort of the 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 um, uh, the the Lions, and I don't believe they're going to be able to run the ball field. They're looking for kind of a big red zone target. They finally got rid of Eric Ebron. I think Kenny Galladay has a a fully healthy here. He's a nice, talented player. So in a pass-friendly offense that's going to score points that doesn't have an other obvious red zone threat, I mean, you've got some Marvin Jones there, but I think Kenny Galladay will significantly outperform that wide receiver 51 ADP. I'm very interested to see if he ends up taking some snaps and two wide receiver snaps uh, sets away from Golden Tate. We'll see if he does. He has been doing that some in the preseason. Yeah, We'll see if it carries over into the regular season. One more, Matthew. A Packers running back you've discussed quite a bit. Yeah, that's Aaron Jones. I mean, uh, I think he's the most talented running back on the Green Bay Packers. Uh, again, the big playability, eight different rushes that went for at least 18 yard, 15 yards on his 81 carries. Mm. That's one every 10.1 carries. The only player with a better rate among qualified running backs, Alvin Kamara. I mean, that's what we're talking about in terms of his big playability. Again, I've talked, uh, Team Source I talked to said that they think by the, the middle of the season, Aaron Jones is going to be the Green Bay Packer running back you want. Now, Jamal Williams doesn't have that big playability, just one 15-yard rush and 153 different carries. Having said that, when he gets volume, Jamal Williams has been fairly effective. Weeks 9 through 17 last year, Jamal Williams was the sixth best running back in fantasy. He was fourth in carries over that stretch, 20 or more touches in six of those nine games. Now, obviously, some of that was without Aaron Rodgers, obviously. I think actually most of that was without Aaron Rodgers. Correct. So yep. with with Brett Hundley under center, they sort of leaned on Jamal uh, Jamal Williams. My expectation is, is that I prefer Aaron Jones, but he's going to miss those first two games. And here's the thing. When you look at ADP, you could basically get Aaron Jones and uh, Jamal Williams for like 11th and a 14th 
something like that. I mean, Jamal Williams, who's going ahead of him, is running back 36. He's going in the 11th round. And Aaron Jones is going like, uh, Aaron Jones is going in the 14th round, running back 44. So to me, getting the, and and I, I don't believe this is a committee. I believe it will be a, there will be one guy. So to get the starting running back on the Green Bay Packers for an 11th and a 14th all day, every day. Stefania, let's hear your three list of three for late round flyers that you like. And we begin with yet another Chargers yes, wide receiver. another Charger, Big Mike Williams. And I, I do think there's some benefit. And we talked about this when we went to the Chargers camp. When you actually see a player, I mean, he is an imposing physical specimen. Even though I was at Chargers camp last year, I didn't really get to see him. Why? Because he was injured. He had that disc problem in his back last year. He talked to us about it. It affected his leg. He actually had nerve issues related to that injury. And that's why even when he came back, he really wasn't as uh, impactful as he could be. And he was also a rookie just trying to learn the offense and get in sync. Well, this year he's been able to work with them um, throughout the offseason season. And we've seen him at his best physically. If you watch him in the preseason, you see how he's able to literally climb up over other players to make catches in the end zone. This is what they brought him in for. Um, over the past five seasons, uh, Thirsty Kyle gives us this stat. The number two pass catcher in a Phillip Rivers-led offense has averaged over six targets per game. I think there's potential for about that volume. That sounds about right. And I think there's a potential for touchdowns. Uh, it, with the loss of Hunter Henry... This year, I think they will be doing some different things in the red zone. I think Keenan Allen has a chance uh, to to do some more in the short yardage plays in the red zone, potentially score. And I think Mike Williams is the guy they will send it to in traffic. So yeah. I really like him. Big body. It's hard to miss. He's been one of the breakout stars of their training camp. Yeah, I'm on board with Mike Williams as a uh, late run flyer. That's one of my favorites as well. A first round pick in 2017. Let's go to a first round pick in 2018, Stefania. And you have mentioned this name on a few occasions now during the preseason, Mr. Calvin Ridley. I I do. I do like him. 26th overall pick. Um, look, I, I think he's an exciting player to watch. There's talk about his drops. I get it. Um, there he even put on display a couple of drops in his most recent outing. Um, as Kyle notes, he did improve in his drop rate in his final collegiate season. And I think who better to mentor him than a fellow Alabama receiver and Julio Jones sure. um, who who will teach him. But look, the, between Julio, Muhammad Sanu, and Calvin Ridley, I, I know people are like, well, he's not going to get much of a chance. But, you know, those guys get banged up during the year. I, th I And I think Julio will play a lot. I think Sanu, um, he missed a little time last year with an injury. And so I think Calvin Ridley, if he gets a shot to shine, is going to demonstrate why you may like him better in dynasty. I'm not sure this is going to be a huge breakout year, but I was able to get him in this redraft league last night as my final bench player. So to have him as a, a, a player I can put on my bench who may have some upside, especially as the season progresses, I think it's worthwhile. Interesting, you know, third wide receiver. So we're going to have to see how much of an, of a consistent role he carves out for Atlanta, but a player that should never have slid to where he did in the draft to it, I believe it was 24th overall, 26, I, 26 I overall, think, yeah. whatever it was. It was yeah. really yeah. talented player that could perform not his average draft position in fantasy, but his real life draft position <laughs> in the NFL. It, we said it wouldn't be a show without a Stefania 49ers reference. It also wouldn't be a show without a Stefania the U reference. That's right. So your third lottery See ticket. I, here. Yeah, that's right. Not nice mention, Field. Um, but, Matthew, you, you already referenced David Njoku. Yeah, Talking I did. about him having potentially a breakout year this year, second year, you know, I'm ex expected to take a, a leap forward. I actually probably paid a little more attention to him just from watching Hard Knocks sure, and yeah. seeing him, you know, kind of brought my – brought my focus to him and then watched him in that first preseason game where he caught two passes in the end zone from two different quarterbacks. And again, to me, demonstrated not only how he could use his physical size to make the plays, but really nimble in terms of how he was able to catch the ball. So um, I really like David Njoku this year. I like him take a step forward. And I love this stat from Kyle. Five of his final six games this season will come against a defense that ranked 24th or worse versus tight ends. So, you know... I, I love. I think he has the potential. I think I have him rated ranked eleventh. I think he has the potential to finish as a top ten tight end this year. I mean, I would not argue against that. There are few players athletically that are even close to his spectrum in the league, much less a tight end. A guy that if he gets his volume, and we think there are a lot of other pass catchers in Cleveland that could get their volume, but if Njoku does, he certainly has top ten tight end. Certainly upside. made a case for it in the preseason to get that volume.